What up, though? OG Kenny, O underscore G underscore Kenny, at Retired from the Streets TV. Welcome to another installment. Listen, I'm so mad. Y'all see my post last night? Listen, I kept going to the lounge, man, thinking they got better Wi Fi. I don't know what YouTube was on. I didn't Google the problem, figuring out what's going on. I don't know what I think. Listen, something up with me and them church crime sunnies. Every time I try to drop one lately, it's been a problem. Anywho, welcome to uh, Monday. Hope everybody had a beautiful weekend. There's been a lot going on in the city of Detroit. A lot of shootings, a lot of uh, random violence. I don't know if people done lost their mind. All that PPP money done ran out. All that free money that everybody was getting. Everybody got to get back on their grind. I don't know what the problem is, but I wish everybody could return back to a sense of normalcy and chill out, man. The summer about to be over with, man. I don't know what's people going with, with summer separation anxiety, but it's crazy, you know. So, just think about stress and tension, period, right, this time of year. Um, like I've been telling y'all recently, I'm at Macomb. I came back from Virginia. This is round, well, it's a little further along this time of year. It's about maybe like November-ish, right? But the weather has changed dramatically. It got real cold that winter. And you know how the winter time go with, up here in Michigan anyway. It get dark when it get winter, early. So, you got to figure 5 o'clock, it's dark. So me and a lot of these young dudes that I'm dealing with at the time, you know, you know, some of them is their first time locked up. But then you got some dudes that I was around at the time who was 20 some years old, 24, 23, 25, who had been locked up six, seven years, almost a decade already. So they spent the rest of their teen years and all of their 20s up to that time incarcerated. One one brother in um, in particular, my Moorish American brother, young bo young Bay. His name is not Young Bay, but he was a young Moorish American whose last name was hyphenated with Bay. So um, what I'm um, what I'm trying to like at the time, me and him, me and him got real tight over just religious studies. Period. Right. So you know, we had a tight camaraderie, man. Me and the brother. You know, over the course of like you know the few weeks I was there, well, actually we had a couple of brief encounters. Mm -hmm in Virginia, but then we got back up to Michigan and Macomb, it was more or less like, bro, I seen you down there, you know, we didn't really have a chance to really build like we wanted to, so we started building, you know, building is when you really have an exchange of thoughts and ideas that are helping each other elevate, and that's what we were doing, we was building, cracking atoms, whatever you want to call them, or sparking atoms, right, so, um, that's what we was doing, having a lot of conversations about um, metaphysical belief systems, how the pyramids were built and whatnot. I told him about the time with me and the brothers, um, the boy I told you, uh, Pretty Boy Myrell, my man um, Dean X, um, Notar X, and my man Ishmael Bay. We were all coming up with our own religion at the time. So we got into some heavy conversations, especially us being young dudes and this dude being a young dude boy had been locked up already almost seven going on eight years the thing was though out of all of his spiritual resolve all of the strength strong got me the one who helped me get my pull-up game real crazy because that's all he used to do pull-ups dips and whatnot matter of fact shout out to broly gangs do these you know if y'all ain't shout, um following broly broly gangs and the whole um goku pump um movement do that them boys have been motivating me to get back up my bar game but at the time this is my dude, the young brother, um, Morris brother. Got my pull-up game, my push-up game and all that through the roof. And But I could see something underneath the surface, right? When you're around a dude for weeks and weeks at a time and y'all having conversations, one thing about an individual, do not lie, I don't care what they say, and that's the look in their eyes when they're talking to you. So I even when we were having real deep conversation even when he was laughing about certain things you could see a somberness a sadness right in that man's eyes and so one day i cut into him i'm like bro why it seem like you you be you you all right but you you depressed now mind you up to this point we haven't really talked about our backstory how we got to prison why we there in the first how much time we doing so when he looked at me he said bro i'm some real stuff man 
I ain't gonna never be happy, bro. He said, I can't never be happy, man. He said, because where I'm at right now, and just thinking about a life I took, and I tried to take another life. He's like the person I am now, ain't nothing like that, man. He said, so that bothered me. I see that man's face all the time. When I'm half asleep, when I'm walking, when I'm eating, if a certain song come on, he said, that's why I don't listen to no rap no more, bro. He said, because every time they talking about doing a drive-by, doing a shoot or whatever, all they do is trigger that, and it, it take me right back to that place. He said, so, you know, I ain't never going home. I ain't never going home. I play it out, and I really had, they, they were trying to give me more time than that. You know what I'm saying? He's like, so... I just ran with what I could, man, and I took my took my lumps. He said I did the best I could to fight in court and to plead my case and whatnot because the dudes was like intimidating me a little bit and kind of trying to be a bully on, on me. But I, I went looking for them, though. Instead of letting them come to me and, and my space and then being able to say I was defending myself, I went looking for them, and I was wrong because I basically hunted those dudes down like they was prey. And he said in the Sundays, to be honest, I... He's like, I don't even, you know, I don't know if I'ma make it, bro. He said, I don't know if I'm I said, what you mean? He, he said, I don't know. He said, it'd be so many times I just thinking about just tying something around my, you know, and um and, and taking care of myself, getting me out of here faster. He's like, cause I feel like I don't really have a place in what y'all call heaven or paradise. This is a deep conversation coming from a dude that I got close with, and it's like hit me all in the, I'm like, damn, you know how they say, watch you ask, watch you ask for rather. That's one of them things, like, I should have kind of been cautious in them steps, but I'm glad we had this conversation. Because when I'm talking to his bunkie, like a day or two later, and I'm like, man, just keep an eye on him, bro. He said, I'm glad you said that, man. He said, because he been on some different stuff now, man. He don't talk no more in the cell. He don't say nothing to me. He will nod or whatever. Or might say, what up during the morning or whatnot. He said, but after that, we don't, we ain't, he said, we ain't talking about two weeks, bro. He said, we ain't had a conversation. He said, and we used to be kicking it about sports, religion. Music, politics, all that. He said he just shut down on me. And when I found this out, then that's my man, and I had already crossed that that line anyway, and, and and got all in this business. I just was like, bro, you good? You ain't think about, you know? He said, yeah, I am. He said, I think about it every day. He said, I'm sick of it, man. He said, I've been here almost ten years, man, a few years. He said, man, I ain't never seen nothing. He said, I ain't never been with a female. He said, you know what I'm saying? He said certain things that just bother me, bro. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to deal with it. And in and, and that story, man, it's like, the brother didn't do nothing to himself. You know what I mean? I ended up, um, I wasn't with him very long. I'll say that much, right? Um, and we didn't really keep in contact, to be honest. So my thing was, though, looking back on a lot of these young dudes that I see now in the news, a lot of, like we used to call them first 48 babies. All them little young dudes that get on there and get to run their mouth too much, telling on themselves and whatnot. I seen it in a lot of those dudes that come in, never been with a woman, haven't experienced nothing, never, a lot of times had a full-time job, right? Never owned a vehicle, never had their own apartment or nothing nowhere. So you got these dudes that are coming into prison as babies, not even knowing themselves, sentenced to life in prison. You understand what I'm saying? Even at early 20s. Come on, I was 21 when I got incarcerated. I didn't know. I knew a lot of things as far as first-hand experience and working and moving around and whatnot. But I ain't know nothing for real. I found out a lot of stuff later on, later on in life. You understand what I'm saying? That's, you know, so I, I say that all these times when I say these stories. Every time I tell a story, I'm saying what I'm saying to help keep some of you young dummies up out of prison. Because a lot of y'all really, really out there running around like it's a video game. Y'all think y'all playing Grand Theft Auto and y'all taking lives. Y'all running from police. Y'all hitting innocent bikes, standing with these cars and whatnot. And then when y'all sit in these courtrooms, y'all think it's gang gang. I'm on TV. I'm about to... But when y'all get sentenced and that door closed and that first, second, third, fourth, eighth, tenth, twelfth, fifteenth year then pass. And you realizing, dog, I'm still young. But I'm never going home. You can live, especially in prison, because you're not dealing with a lot of pollution. You're not dealing with a lot of toxins, right? You're not dealing with a lot of bowl, over-processed food, unless you're just eating cook-ups all the time, right? But even then, you get burnt out on that. But you got a longer time span to live, potentially, in, in some of those situations. You got a dude that might later be 80, 90 years old and been locked up since he was 17. You hear me? And, and, and end up passing in prison. So... 
It sounds slick. And trust me, I got homies who still my age who still be on slide. And, but don't be 35 plus, 30 plus, 20. I, look, I don't care. When you when you learn enough and you bump your head and you've seen a million individuals before you go down that same path and be unsuccessful, don't come to me talking no nonsense, no garbage about nothing. I'm chasing the B-A-G, to brag about God, to get to it. I'm trying to keep them nervous, and I'm trying to keep the change. I didn't, I haven't did all this and changed and put all this work in to be a better person, to be backsliding and hitting licks and jugs and selling dope. Man, watch your mouth. Anyway, man, I love y'all, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the story. I hope y'all got something from it. If y'all got nephews, man, let them watch it, bro. Because, look, ain't nothing like being in that shower at, you know, 20-something years old. and You done been locked up your whole life. Ain't never been able to smell a woman's breath real good. Come on, now. So... Think about it. If y'all haven't done so so far, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, go ahead and smash that like. Please comment whatever you would like to comment, share the video, and man, I'm going to see y'all next time. OG Kenny, O underscore, G underscore Kenny, I retired from the Streets TV, and I'm out.